Um, in the past two months, we've held community meetings in regards to geothermal um, impacts on all of us. And we did voting on, we made lists of all the issues that concerned us in regards to geothermal and voted on what was our priority, what was the most important things for us to focus on. And we have a mixed community of ages, cultures, um, and humans. I don't really believe that there's races other than human race. But the general, the highest priority that the Puna community put in regards to geothermal was um, the Pele practitioners and Pele herself, Pele being the volcano goddess and the practitioners, that the consensus of our meetings was that as long as the native Hawaiian Pele practitioners, that they were care taken care of, that there was no more infringement upon Pele and the practitioners, meaning no more geothermal, we would be okay. That's the most important. We all recognize whether we, whether we were born in Hawaii, whether we moved here, we're all in the same boat. But the people that have lived here for generations and generations and generations and have this ancient culture that goes back deeper than even living in the Hawaiian Islands, they have a knowledge that is so ancient and so connected with the earth and all the elements to the point of being able to have conversations with them and, and interactions like you and I are having now that to damage, to drill into Pele and to damage that culture is losing knowledge that we can't afford to lose. Um, so let's look at realistically, what does drilling do into Pele who's right now in the middle of giving birth to another island? Some people, um, some Hawaiians that claim to be for geothermal, they just want a cut of the pie. A cut of the prophets say that well there's no no Hawaiians arrested for worshiping Pele it's not whether they're arrested or not what does it do to to Pele herself what does it do to a person's heart and their soul do we want you know 30 years from now when the child is driving by in the school bus and they look at a geothermal plant and they point and say that's Pele no that's not what Pele is, and nor should she be used for that. We need an independent health study of the geothermal neighbors. We know that we're getting sick. We know we're getting sicker, and we're starting to see that we're all having the same things. Let's look at what's really going on. Really, we just want it all to end. Stop geothermal, but it's there. We're being used as guinea pigs, but nobody wants to bother to see what's going on. That's what we need. Let's, let's honestly look at what's happening to us. <sighs> Jerome H2S monitors for all households surrounding PGV. There's handheld monitors. Um, they cost about $13,000. They have data loggers on the back end of them. Um, they can go in your house. They have an alarm system that will tell you, uh, It'll set off an alarm 24 hours a day to, at any set amount that you want to know what's going on in your house. It also records it. We had one that the EPA purchased for us. At my house, it was 620 parts per billion um, one evening. PGV's monitor didn't pick it up for an hour. So that very clearly told me we were gassed for an hour before PGV's monitor picked up. But that's only one monitor what's happening in everybody else's houses. Um, there is funds for mitigation purposes. It would be well to use them for air monitors. So let's get a realistic view of what this community is being exposed to. The Department of Health had an air monitor in our neighborhood and they took it out um, last year, 2011, at the same time PGV was building a second plant without any notification to the neighbors. And they also told the planning inspector when she came out and looked at the foundation that this was for a a uh, storage area, but it was actually for a second geothermal plant. There was a Department of Health air monitor in Nanavali 
that was taken out last year also. So what we're looking at is a power plant that's looking to double its capacity, already has permit to go from 30 to 60 megawatts, but we've reduced the air monitors. Now at least the PGV, I mean the, the Department of Health air monitors put their intake valve lower as was suggested by the EPA, PGV hasn't, but they've reduced the number of monitors, stationary monitors, and right now the one Department of Health monitor that I'm aware of is in Leilani Estates community and it's up on a hill. So all the existing stationary monitors that, I'm, that I can see that are in the communities are up on hills when we knowingly know hydrogen sulfide gas and heavy metals are heavier than air. So the powers that be are trying extremely hard to make sure that the H2S is not recorded in our communities. We need real-time and online access to all of Department of Health and PGV's monitoring systems. Um, also in regard to monitoring, PGV does come out with the Jerome H2S monitors, but theirs do not have data loggers attached to them. They come out with a clipboard and a pencil to write down what they read. Um, I've had it where there was H2S that the, right on my porch, so when I opened the door I was hit in the face with hydrogen sulfide gas. It was just that the air the, the wind came down from PGV, switched around my house, and it just sat on my porch. Well, they knew they were having a problem, and there was already um, a man with an H2S, portable H2S monitor at their air monitoring station, because it had gone off. I asked him to come to my house and please monitor on my porch, and he was the first person that I've ever seen to actually hold the air monitor down to the ground and actually walk around and look for H2S, or in general, PGV, Employees will put it on top of the hood of their car. They don't get out of the car and they face it the other direction and They stay for a few minutes and leave but this one man was willing to actually look like he was looking to find H2S So I asked him to come to my house and as we were walking down the road to come to my house He called his supervisor and his supervisor told him no do not go to to Aurora's house and monitor um, the gases so very obviously they don't want to know, but we need to know. And real-time access online, where we can go on the computer, it should be all downloaded in, I mean, this is simple technology. Why do they not want us to have access to that information? And relocation rules to be revised to allow residents within three miles of PGV to be able to move. Um, the impact of the blowout was actually 10 miles away. Uh, the plume actually went to Hawaiian Acres. Um, right now the rule is it only allows residents within one mile and uh, people whose homes were built before PGV, which was October 3rd, 1989, was when PGV got their permit. Um, tomorrow there is a meeting at the County Council to revise those rules. Um, we put a three mile on this because it's three miles to the ocean, so three miles to Pahoa, three miles to Hawaiian beaches. Um, so that's kind of um, uh, a radius we were looking at. By most certainly, I would think anybody that wants to be outside of the PGV impact zone of at least 10 miles should be allowed. What else the community needs right now is a, work a workable evacuation plan for geothermal neighbors. Though the EPA reviews the uh, Civil Defense Evacuation Plan for PGV back in 2000, um, and it was very clear that it really can't be done, uh, the county is trying to do it again. Again, there's a hearing tomorrow on April 16th to mandate that the evacuation plan is done for us. Kind of ridiculous that these this this plant has gotten a permit since '93. And we're at 2012. Um, 2012 is an amazing year. This is the year when uh, things change and the people will get what they want. And we need a proper buffer zone. Um, the word is out that a proper buffer zone in geothermal is 10 miles. You know, we don't want ge geothermal in, in Hawaii at all. And then we wouldn't have to even deal with any of these toxicities or damage to native practitioners. But when PGV came in, there was only 
five houses in my neighborhood of Lani Puna Gardens. Um, the increase in population has has been great, and where are we going to go when there's when there's an accident? Um, we have to address realistically what that plant's putting out. Um, PGV tests for these chemicals on a yearly basis, but nobody knows, nobody gives us what, what that is, what comes out every day besides H2S, we need to know. Anybody that can help, please help us in this, um, because whatever, they, whatever they're whatever they doing to us in Puna, they plan on doing the same things to you guys in Upper Puna, rest of Lower Puna, Four Corners area, Kapoho, Kalapana, and um, Kona and Maui and let's stop it here. The first plant that they had planned um, is now where Puo Vent was. There was drillers up there, I lived in Kalapana and um, they were setting up for a drill rig and that's when the eruption started and they had to be helicoptered out. They tried to do a power plant in Waukele Opuna Hawaiians up, went up and had a conversation with the powers that be, and I don't mean governmental, and there was no more steam after that. HGPA was a three megawatt plant, it was shut down, and now PGV is struggling along, drilling another rig just because they're not even running at full capacity. So we just need to knock these guys out and be done with this. So any help we can do, thank you very much and um, be in contact. Thank you.